two, three. Looks like I'm good to film. Hello everyone. Okay, I'm gonna do a little experiment today. I am doing a little vlog of my record life and just give you a little more of who I am, I guess, and um, kind of just share the day with you. My husband right now is in Japan. He is working the Olympics. Um, and he's gonna be gone <laughs> uh, too long. And uh, so I need some company. So I'll hang out with you guys. I actually have a few packages to open. So if you guys wanna join me, let's open up some packages. All right, am I the only one that has a pile of like records <laughs> in boxes? You know, I try to keep organized as much as I can with this hobby of mine, but sometimes it just adds up, right? I've been really into 90s music right now. I've been kind of exploring it. And in my little, um, I did like a little reel on YouTube on my phone and a few of you guys suggested some bands to check out and I did. And so from that list, I actually bought some music based on your guys' recommendations. So thank you for taking the time to do that. All right, so um, I bought The Breeders. I thought this was really a CD worth having. I had heard about it a few times, and they have a really cool song, and I thought, hey, why not? Went on eBay. And then this is The Pixies. This is their most famous one, Where um, Where Is My Mind? So I thought this was a cool one to have. It's funny, I'm opening up these packages and I don't know how people do it, but they can talk and do something else at the same time. <laughs> not for me, you know, in reality, I'm not the most extroverted person out there. Um, so I I remember Anna DeFranco, I had discovered her from a little documentary that was on PBS about high school kids back in 2001 called American High. That's, yeah, American High. I can't find it on DVDs. I can't find it anywhere. It was a really cool documentary of following these children, I think, in Michigan. And uh, one of the songs that one of the girls played, oh, it was so beautiful. She played it, and it was called Anna DeFranco, You Had Time. And whoa, that song at that time in my life was like, help me through the year. I can't believe that a song it has that power to do that. It put to words and to music what I was going through at that time. During that era, there was Napster. Do you guys remember Napster? Totally illegal to go download music, but there I was downloading music. <laughs> and um, I found Anna DeFranco and I found that song and Little Plastic Castles was, um, I was just downloading all the songs from this album. I never owned it. And there's, it was just so cool to be able to hear words that I was feeling and connecting with. And, um, oh my gosh, this song, Pulse. All right, so this artist was recommended by Richard, who's been a subscriber since I started. And this is um, Nico. And she has the most amazing voice. I had never known of her. Like, it. remember when people used to spend time on their CD cases? Isn't this beautiful? Now, this is from 2005. There was, I think, a vinyl available, but it was really expensive. And this was $5. So, you know, I don't have all the money in the world, so I gotta pick and choose. All right. Vanilla Skies, you guys remember this film? It was so cool. And I remember, I'm like remembering the opening scene when Tom Cruise is running in New York City and it's completely empty. Like that was last year, that totally happened last year. You could probably run to the middle of Times Square and it'd be empty. How weird is that? So this movie, I remember leaving the theater like, whoa, what did I just see? I loved it. I loved the dream and like what was reality. 
And I love that whole mix. Like this is filmmaking at its best of um, kind of sticking with you. And so I had seen a new vinyl person I started following on Instagram. He had the vinyl of this and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that existed. And so I looked it up and I ended up just finding the CD, which was $4 or so. But they, this um, soundtrack has some great songs. R.E.M., Radiohead, Paul McCartney, um, Cigarose. Like the first time I heard Cigarose was on this film and I was just like, what the heck was that? That was the most amazing music ever. It sounded like Angel singing, Bob Dylan, the Chemical Brothers. Like this is a great soundtrack to have. And uh, yeah, it's so great to be reminded of this music that I loved when I was young. And now I can find it online. Like that is awesome. And I love owning it. I love being able to just open it up. It's broken. <laughs> open it up and look at the pictures. Like, is this Tom Cruise 2020? <laughs> All right, here's a new record, Nico, The Tigers Have Spoken. Now this one wasn't that expensive, Nico Case. So I decided I'll just buy it. So I'm just digging. I'm just so excited to dig into her discography. Um, she's a new kind of person for me, singer, songwriter, beautiful voice, you know, and when I was listening to the samples, I thought I heard that voice before and she was on a few Morning Jackets albums. So I love Morning Jacket and she was one of the people on there. Ooh, I did it. One take. All right. Oh, okay, yeah, this one's a cool one. This is Posh Head Dummy. Now, I had heard pieces of her songs on soundtracks to movies, but uh, the Vinyl Guru recommended um, Posh Head, and also one of the, another one of you guys recommended um, her. It's such a cool album. I found it on eBay as well for a good price. And I'm just excited to own it and to play it and to get into it. I'm like 20 years late, but hey, better late than never. All right, so I am just gonna reorganize my whole setup. You know, I'm gonna put music that I need to listen to up here and um, reorganize my CDs. And um, you know, it could be very messy, the whole record collection life. I like just hanging out with a few records at a time because it could get very overwhelming. You guys all know Kokoban, I love them. The Smiths, I'm currently a new collector of the Smiths. And this is actually my friend Cameron's, um, Jeff Buckley's white boy. All right guys, I'm gonna show you a little hack that I just love, and this is from the Soul Ladies vinyl channel. Now, she didn't even mention this, but I saw that she was doing this, and I'm like, oh, that is brilliant. So, I love the way she packages her records. So she has it in a plastic case, and then she puts the LPs behind the record, which makes it super easy to grab, and you don't, you know, they're not falling out. And I basically put my records in the plastic case from bottom, from the bottom. So it makes it so easy just to pack in and get records. It's just awesome. That was so cool that she does that. Next project, it is to make my music digital and put them in the computer. Now, this is a portable CD drive to my Mac because Mac doesn't like CDs anymore. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it gives me a hard time and um, basically spend some time just uploading my music. I don't know, this is just the way I figured out how to own my music forever and also listen to them digitally. Um, I know it's work, but I don't know, I enjoy this process, it's fun to me. And uh, I've always done it like this.
you know, yesterday it just all worked out perfectly. Joseph sent a comment and said, hey, check out Best Buy's website. They have some great speakers that are on sale, Sony bookshelves. I checked them out, exactly what I wanted, and they had them in stock. So on the way home, I did curbside pickup and they basically came, put them in my trunk, and I was ready to go. I've had these little ghetto speakers on like a very expensive record <laughs> turntable. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was ready. I was ready and I was in the market to look for some speakers. I just hadn't had time to like do all the research. It was, I knew it was gonna be time consuming. So hopefully these work out. I'm excited to switch them out from these. All right, there we go, guys. It's coming together great. Um, I definitely need to get audio cables because it's just a different input, so I need to look this up to see what I need. But wow, I actually have a stereo. <laughs> small, don't despise small beginnings, what I started off with. <laughs> Well, it's late at night and I am ready to hook up my speakers. I had to wait until the kids were asleep because they would not let me do this. <laughs> um, I can't test my speakers to its full capacity because they're asleep, but I'm excited just to have them set up. And in the morning, I'll check them out and see how they sound. But um, my husband said I could use this tool, found it in the garage, uh, to cut the cable. So I'm gonna try it out, I'm gonna measure it out, equally with a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, I don't want to do it too tight just in case in the future I move things around. So wish me luck. Well, I am at my parents' house and their living room is dark, which is fine because they have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so um, just kind of black it out, right? <laughs> so I went to the post office and I picked up some packages. I'm really excited to open these up. I don't know what's in them. A friend basically said, hey, I have all these albums I don't want, do you want them? I said, all right, send them my way and I'll kind of go through them. And then I got a fun little package from Christina, you guys know who she is. But she said it's not for me, she said it's for the baby. So I'm excited to see what it is. All right, I opened up the first package and it is little records, Disney records from Christina. Thank you so much for sending these. Look well, yeah, at she wants them already. All right, first one is Jungle Book. Alice in Wonderland, can you guys see them? The cool thing about these is you can go through the story and you can listen to the record. So it's kind of cool. I like to have this as yellow. This is like the beginning of colored vinyls. <laughs> Lady and the Tramp. Look at the dogs. Lady and the Tramp. You know, they definitely got to do reissue on these because you can only find the old, old ones from the 70s. And, and uh, I don't know if they did them in the 80s. 45 RPM, Winnie the Pooh. And this is Christina's very own. I'm really excited to hear this. I've seen a few of you guys in the vinyl community have one. Totally jealous. How fun. Thank you so much, Christina, for sending them some records. You know, when you have children, I'll send these back to you. <laughs> so uh, my friend sent me a few CDs and I am not familiar with anyone. So I am just gonna, this is called Novella Vague. Wait, I kind of, I might know who this girl is. I might because I heard a song probably 10 years ago and I really loved it. I'm curious if this is them. I don't know. It looks like from the songs um, 2010. You know, 10 years ago I heard the song. So maybe I might know who this is. If it is, it's like a, a female vocal. That's what I know. The white, mink, black, cotton. This looks like some jazz, maybe from like the swing era style. And then this is Sea Surfer. 
Well, I've been documenting my week and I hope you guys been enjoying it. I have one last thing before I go. So when I had filmed opening up my mail, um, uh, my friend had sent me some markers but my battery died and so I didn't get a finish. So I'm gonna show you that here. One album that he sent me that was pretty interesting was the Simon and Garfunkel um, Fidelity Sound. And I was really curious of what this would sound like because I own a stereo 1970 whatever <laughs> um, original pressing and it's ripped so I don't know what year it was but it would I thought oh it's gonna be so cool to compare the two and so I did and the first thing I noticed high fidelity was definitely a lot thicker and vital and super clean of course uh, my stereo one that I had bought um, was used so it's just war you know it's a little bit worn but not totally bad um, it is thinner so putting it on the stereo immediately in the high fidelity I because I'm a video editor I just imagine different layers being enhanced and gain added or maybe a bass is added and that's kind of what it sound like like a more enhancement version which was pretty interesting to hear it definitely filled up the room and it sound amazing uh, but then I put on my stereo and it was an analog and it sound it definitely sounded flatter but it sounded more authentic and so I know there's some collectors who are just high fidelity or some who are just original pressing and I think it all depends what you prefer and how you like your sound to sound so it's just interesting to hear the two and to compare it and um, I had fun with that. And you know what, I don't know which one I'm gonna keep. I mean, I could keep both, but um, it, now I'm, <laughs> is this a thing where people collect both? Uh, let me know down be below in the comments if people do that. That's just pretty interesting. Um, okay, so let me show you the records that he sent me. He sent me some pretty cool ones. Now, he had seen that I was kind of jumping into jazz, dabbing my toe in, and so he sent me some jazz albums, and I've never heard of these. I'm gonna play them today and just kind of take them in. I'm really excited to hear it. So just, I've seen this around, this is Blue Train, Blue Note, um, John Colt Ran, and yes, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, here's another one, Dexter Gordon. So these are just gonna be so fun to dig into. Um, and then he sent me like a fancy one. This is Miles Davis and it, this is like one, there's one vinyl in here, but you know, it's case and the special prints and like, uh, this is pretty amazing. I'm gonna put this on right now and just see what it sounds like. I mean, the packaging is, is really beautiful. So I'm excited to take this in. Everyone's always talking about Miles Davis and now for the first time I get to hear it myself. Um, and then I think he just sent me some bonus ones. He heard me talking about Maisie Star, and so he sent me a Maisie Star copy. I do own this one already, so I think I'm just gonna keep my ears open for someone who really loves Maisie Star and maybe just surprise him with a vinyl copy. That's kind of what I'll do with that. And I'm just so thankful. Thank you guys again. You know, those who are generous and send me stuff, you don't have to, but it's fun. Um, and I think that's it. I think I'm gonna wrap it up. You know, I had a few more things I wanted to do, but this episode has gotten pretty long. You know, the record life, it never ends. Um, it's fun, it's enjoyable, and you learn a lot about music technology and uh, all the stuff. So yeah, thank you guys um, for subscribing. And I think I'm like one person away from a thousand. So if you're not subscribed yet, please take the time to do so. I greatly appreciate it. Also, I have a PayPal link down below. Think of it as a tip. You know, if you guys ever just want to send me a tip like a barista, <laughs> I greatly appreciate it. All the money will go into buying gear. I'm looking to buy a GoPro. So that's going to be fun. I think if I go out record shopping, it'll be a lot easier with a GoPro. We'll see how we go. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye.